dad and your uncles play music during that mm -hmm. time? Do you have memories of oh, like yeah. a child going going to and tell me a little bit about the the music that they play and what role they play in in the community, right? Everyone played music there. Uh, we would all, my grandmother, like I said, was a block away. My grandmother played the guitar. Um, every one of my dad's brothers played both accordion and guitar and drums. So they would just interchangeably hear, you play the drums, I'll play the guitar today, I'll play the accordion. Um, on my mom's side of the family, it was the same way. Everybody played something, some kind of an instrument. Um, several of my uncles uh, later, uh, because they were, they were pretty young when we were in Texas, but later they did become um, professional musicians, not famous or anything, but they, they would play with different bands at, you know, at uh, dance halls, at bars, parties, whatever. But um, there was always music. Um, so any get together, it, was, it wasn't like a formal, okay, here come the musicians. It was more the instruments were there, people would pick them up and just start playing. And, and, and then we would start dancing. <laughs> it was a very large family. Um, on my father's side, there are seven. Uh, four brothers and three sisters and on my mother's side it was seven brothers uh, and my mom and on my mother's side her mother died very very young she was 56 so um, her brothers got along really well with my dad's family so they would just join us so we'd have like this big giant group and um, at whatever holiday birthday um, and the women would be doing the buñuelos for New Year's and the tamales and and we would do the the quilting, you know, the old fashioned where you put the poles and you put the cloth and then we would actually do the, the carding of the cotton with the, the brushes and lay them out. And and it wasn't just the grown up women, it, the kids too. I mean, they would put us to work, whatever it is we could do. Um, we couldn't do the sewing, but we could do the carding of the cotton, we could do the stacking, we could run the errands, uh, we can do um, uh, some of the cooking, whatever we were able to do, we did it. And it was so much fun because everybody was doing something. We came in March 1961. To Portoville. to Portoville? Yes. And why, why Portoville? Well, my father had um, a uh, cousin, um, like a third cousin or something, who lived in Portoville. And so he, uh, my father reached out to him. It was the only person he knew in California. So we decided uh, we would move to Porterville. And it was a very hard life for us um, because my parents didn't know how to pick the fruit. Uh, in Porterville, it's primarily um, trees, you know, oranges, a lot of citrus, grapefruit, lemons, oranges, uh, olive trees, uh, but everything is, is trees. There's very little work um, on the ground or there's no cotton there. And my parents didn't know how to do that kind of work. Um, not that it's difficult, but it's, um, if you want to make money, it's, you have to, you have to move really fast. Mm -hmm. And um, the work is not hourly, it's piece rate. So you have to make a certain number of boxes in order to make it worth your while. And they would come home with their arms would be totally scratched from the branches of the trees. Their, um, their legs were just bruised from leaning up against the, the ladder. Uh, their shoulders and the back would be hurting because you have to carry the ladder on your shoulder when you move from what they call one set to another set, a set being four or six trees. Um, so it was it was very difficult work for them. Um, they were not used to it, but um, you know, such is life. So you, you learn, you you learn, and you become better at it. And um, once my father had gotten kind of situated and figured out how to get a job. Um, with the housing situation and so on was 
he contacted his sister because remember I told you his older sister and him and the younger brother, they were always very close. So he contacted them. They were in the same situation. They had worked at the canning factory and they were pretty much out of a job doing whatever farm work they could do in, in the area of Mission, Texas. So uh, the first one to come was my, my aunt, um, uh, tia, my Tia Maria, and her husband's name uh, was Horacio Barza. And um, they had um, five children. Uh, six one was born in Porterville. And they came in 1963, uh, 62? They might have come in 1962. And, um, and then sh just a few months after them, my Tio Rico came, Jose Raul Barrera. And his, his wife's name was uh, Margarita Cantu. And they had four kids, and uh, three more were born in Portima. So all of a sudden, we have family in the area, which is great. And um, they would get together all the time. So um, it was always, with that many people, it was always somebody's birthday, somebody's anniversary, somebody's you know communion, uh, confirmation, whatever, and uh, and those. They, that's where the, the parties were with the accordion, the guitar, the drums. And then my mom's youngest brother, Gilberto, we call him Beto, he decided he wanted to move over here too. And like I said, her brothers got along really well with the, my dad's brother, so her brothers-in-law. So all of a sudden we have the Garces here, we have the Barreras here. It's like we were forming our little community. And um, the march was March 17th. They got to Portoville on the 19th. And it, and it was somewhat small at that at that point, right? It I was think. it was very small. Yeah, there yeah. were there were the originales probably only and a few. Oh, others, exactly. Right? Nobody had joined had mm -hmm. joined them yet. It was just the original people. And then they get to Porterville, and when they get to Porterville, we were very, very organized. Um, everybody got a place to, to stay. Um, so my dad's job at that point, he was working with um, Ricardo and, and Manuel Chavez, and so the whole thing was find a place for them to sleep um, and give them food and you know get them back to the, the point to march in the morning. And um, somebody donated boots, and I, I can't remember where those boots came from, but they were, there was a big truck that was parked next to the FOE hall. Mm -hmm. And so th in the morning, they were all switching to the, the original marchers and the ones who were gonna march, they were switching to the boots because these were like walking boots. And they had already, like whatever they were wearing, they had already kind of like worn them out and they all had like, uh, problems with their feet and um, so everybody remembers that part that right there at the FOE hall they had they had somebody give them these new boots walking boots and and then from there my parents took off with them did they plan all along to go all the way to Sacramento yeah but they didn't um, they, they did it a little bit differently what they did is uh, we marched we the kids and parents and other family we marched up to um, Visalia, and then that was, we had to go back to school. What they would do is they marched with them for a while, and then they came home, they would come home because somebody had to work. <laughs> like my mom would come back, for example, and leave my dad, and, um, and then my mom would, would work, and, uh, and then she would go back and catch up with them. And then sometimes both of them would come back for like, you know, a day or whatever to work. And then they would drive again. So they were doing a lot of driving back and forth um, because we, we were still in school. So we had to stay and they had nobody to leave us with because my uncle was doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, so they didn't like take off from Porterville and stay and with stay the march the until it was over. And so they were not like the original people that started and they ended up in Sacramento. But they, you know, they consider themselves like that they did march to Sacramento because they were 
they would catch up with them like in the like for example they would come and work and then in the evenings they'd be in whatever city and they would go catch up and then they would march in the morning and then um, they would do that for a few days and then come back and, so, it was, and it was yeah. quite a fit because they had to carry the the, the musical the accord, instruments yeah, right the instruments a guitar and yeah yeah so and and you know it was um, I mean, hearing my dad talk about it, because I mean, I wasn't there at that point. I, the kids, we, we didn't even go to Sacramento. Uh, they were there at Sacramento, but hearing them talk about it, it was just the most amazing time of their life.